Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial for microelectronics. Uh, today we are going to be looking at the photo cell. Uh, this is going to be a pretty cool gizmo. I had uh, a few people comment and that they liked that video that I made, uh, video I think two videos back, on the uh, linear actuator and how that worked. You know, it was actually a demo for the relays, but you know, I, I wanted to make it interesting, so I threw some random circuit together that did that at least did something instead of just you know just showing a relay clicking. That's that's kind of boring, um, but seeing it actually do something is is I think a little bit a little bit better. So anyway, um, I realized you know, and I think I said that in that demo video that. Uh, I don't think we've ever talked about photocells, so I figured I uh, might as well. I'll just show you that circuit that I just kind of threw together with some random parts that were laying around. I'll show you that circuit and I'll explain uh, kind of what's going on. Um, quick update, um, real quick, just because I'm excited, I want to tell you guys about it. I did place an order for some stuff, and we'll probably do a mailbag video that will show uh, that will show what it is once it gets here. But some exciting stuff. I'm sure you guys will be really excited about it too. It's gonna be, it's gonna be pretty cool. I ordered some cool stuff. So anyway, all that aside, let's go ahead and and get into get into this. Um, before we begin uh, getting into the schematic, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a quick clip. I recorded some video of me uh, kind of explaining a, a photo cell and uh, kind of showing how to use a meter to check them and uh, do different things. Just in case if it's one that came in a grab bag like this one is, um, I got from my local Radio Shack and it was just kind of in a grab bag of them. Um, so um, here's a video that I recorded uh, showing you how to take a meter to these things and and do some different things with them. So we'll check that out and we'll be we'll come right back to this. Okay, guys, we're gonna be looking at the uh, the re the uh, light sensor here. Sorry, almost said relay. No. Um, anyway, this is your basic uh, photo sensor. Um, see if I can get really close and show you really what it looks like. Um, Basically, it's it when light hits it. It's actually a, a it's a silicon-based product, and what happens is when light hits it, it frees up electrons in the crystalline structure that the the silicon's made out of, and it makes it where it actually changes its resistance. So basically, all you need to know is when I hit this with light, it's going to change its resistance. So, for example, if I get a flashlight. You know, and shine on it. It's going to be a different resistance than when it's not. Now, I've got some lighting going on, so you guys can really see this. But we'll see if we can we can make a difference here. This one I got from my local electronics store. Um, you usually can find these in little packs, um, and who knows what they'll be. Sometimes it says on the pack what it is. Sometimes it doesn't. It just depends. But a good way to do to figure out what it's going to be is a good old multimeter and set your set your meter to ohms and this is the best way to do this and just ohm it out you know take one lead put it on here and we'll get the other one here and we get out of the way so you can see it and this guy right now is about eight kilo ohms if i put my finger over it make it dark and it's about five kilo ohms when it's dark see see that and then when i let the light hit it it gets less so this guy, the type of this guy is when the light hits it, he lowers his resistance and hires his resistance based on whether it's bright or dark. So that's the easiest way to, to check and see what kind of, uh, and what the resistance is of it is just put it in a dark place by either putting your finger over it or whatever, then put it in a really bright place and you can kind of see the swing uh, that the resistance will be in. And so that's basically how you test your uh, your little sensor here and how you kind of see what it can, what it can do and kind of what its ranges are if you don't have a data sheet and, or that can really explain to you what types of light and these are also affected by different wavelengths of light too which I'll explain a little more perhaps and that's basically how you test one of these little guys all right well we're back to the schematic here hopefully that was a uh, 
pretty good little explanation. It was uh, fairly quick, but uh, had some good information into it. Um, so basically, yeah, what a photocell is, is it's basically a resistor that changes its value based on whether it's light or dark. So very useful little tool that you can have. And like I said, that one was somewhere what was it between I don't know 3K and something? Yeah, it was like like a few I don't know a few a few ohms like 50 ohms or 100 ohms something like that to 3K or something was what that specific one more or less was. Its different values. So anyway, knowing that um, we can create a volt divider. Uh, circuits kind of similar to the ones that we did for uh, ADCs, you know, with a potentiometer and a resistor, and then you, you know, do a volt divider and send that into the uh, into the ADC, and so you can you can see a voltage changing. Kind of similar thing, except instead of it being a potentiometer that we're twisting, it is a uh, it's a photocell. And if if you guys haven't seen that that video um, on ADCs or whatever, I invite you to check it out. Um, maybe I'll put a link up or something for it. But uh, you can check that video out. It's uh, very helpful on what we're doing. Anyway, with this guy, that's essentially what we've done down here. Now we've got our good old regulator, our 7805 regulator. I enjoy using that little guy um, because our actuator is actually 12 volts. But the relay that I had just laying around was a 5 volt relay. And so um, I needed 5 volts on the board. So I figured I'd make 5 volts with uh, just a regular old 7805 uh, uh, LDO, low dropout uh, voltage regulator. So there's the basics. You know, you got the cap on the in, cap on the out. And it's a linear voltage regulator. So you don't need, you know, anything for those, those uh, whatever they are the switchers or anything like that. So you got the 12 on the end, five comes out. And then down here we have our volt divider. As you can see, we've got a volt divider going on. We got 3.16K. Since this guy's max is somewhere around close to that, we're basically just having the voltage here. So anyway, um, so we've got, we've, got, we've got our volt divider that should give us an on off right here. So basically, um, it's going to, when this resistance goes down, the voltage here is going to go up. So, and the way this guy works, as you saw in the video before, is that when you shine the light on it, its resistance goes down. When you take the light away, its resistance goes up. So that's basically how our switch is going to work. When this resistance goes down, the voltage is going to rise on the gate. It's going to trigger this FET to close, which will provide the ground for the coil of our relay and turn our relay on. And like I said, and this this is this is my relay um, is what we've got going on here. This is a standard symbol for it. If you guys um, nobody's dealt with these before, um, here's the coil, and then here's the contacts. Okay, the coils here. Here's our one in four thousand seven protection diode that's stretched across it. Um, we've got the five volts in, and then we're going to switch the ground through our FET. Okay, so there's our protection diode to protect against um, that. Uh, I'm thinking of backscatter right now. Uh, no, uh, that inductive overspike that happens uh, when you take the voltage away from this guy. Um, you've also so you've also I've also got this one mega ohm bleeding resistor. That's to just to, for the to bleed the the uh, capacitance off of the gate to source. You know, capacitance is to bleed that off. Um, if you haven't, uh, uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can check out my MOSFETs uh, video. There's a video on transistors that I did, kind of a back to basics uh, deal on how to on transistors and how they work. Anyway, um, you've got over here in the contacts section. This is where we get we see the double pull, double throw. It's got two sets. Of, of switches basically so that is the double pull side of it then it's double throw because it's got a normally closed as you can see here and a normally open that's over here okay so that's the double throw so double pull double throw okay is how this guy works the reason I chose this relay for this is because the way our my actuator works that I have is if the actuator is one polarity it moves out if you swap the polarity it moves in okay so if you put plus to plus and minus to minus of a 12 volt power supply to that to the actuator it will move in if you put plus to or it'll move out sorry it'll move out if you put plus to minus and minus to plus you flip the polarity then it moves in 
So that's essentially what this is doing with this double pull, double throw relay. On the normally closed side, on this side, see between uh, points P1 and O1 and P2 and O2, you've got 12 volts is going to the negative side of the actuator and you've got ground going to the positive side of the actuator. Okay. Now, on the normally open side, which is the side that when you, when you let's say this FET closes in and it energizes the coil, this is when this that's when they will switch to their to the other side. That's called the normally open side of points because they're closed in when the relay is energized, when the coil of the relay is energized. So when it moves over, it is going to break this 12 volts away from the negative, and it's going to break the ground away from the positive, and what it's going to do is notice our actuator is tied to the common points of the, of the two sets of points. What it's going to do is then it's going to move that over uh, uh, up here on this, on this top one. It's going to move the negative to the ground, see? The negative is going to come through here, go through the normally open side and hit ground okay and it's not interfering with this because this guy has moved over this direction right so he's this connection basically right here is severed in the energized state so it's okay to tie these two together and similarly in the de-energized state this guy is going nowhere so this tie connection goes nowhere so you're not interfering with anything when you do this okay so Basically, okay, on the same thing, when it's in the energized state, it's going to move this negative, it's going to take it and go through there and move it to ground. Similarly, it's going to take the positive, he's going to move through the normally open side because it's energized, and it's going to put him on the 12 volt side. So hopefully you guys can see that, it's, but that's what it's doing. It's basically swapping that polarity. It's taking ground and either putting it on the negative or the positive, depending, and the same similarly, it's taking 12 volt and putting on negative or positive, depending on which state you're wanting it to be in. Okay, so that's basically it. So like I said, essentially what this guy will do is when we shine a light on him, he moves to the, he, he lowers his resistance, which then brings this voltage up, because remember a simple volt divider is the voltage times the resistor that you want to know the voltage across because it's the voltage across this R1 right here is what's causing this guy to do its thing okay so it's it's going to be your main source voltage your 5 volts times the resistor that you want so times 3.16k and then divided by the sum of the two resistors is what your 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 equation is for a volt divider and so therefore if you uh if you lower the resistance here, you can see that that it will cause the the voltage to ra to rise across this resistor. The voltage will rise across it when this guy lowers, and then similarly when this guy raises his resistance, this the voltage here will go uh, down, which will then turn it off. So in a in a quick little quick nutshell, that's that simple circuit. There's really nothing to it. It's just a relay, a FET and a diode for protection and your photo transistor and, and a resistor for the volt divider you know oh and then of course obviously my voltage regulator now if everything was 12 volt this is a 12 volt relay and this is a 12 volt fet and you know everything was you know in the 12 volt region we do the same thing with 12 volts and just keep everything 12 volts and eliminate this uh that uh voltage regulator but since it's like i said since the relay is a 5 volt relay I had to have the two different voltages, so I had to throw a regulator in there somewhere. So, okay, guys, hopefully this was helpful. This one's going to be a short one because there is no software. One cool thing um, about the uh, this circuit is that there there is no software. Now, well, I know that we've heavily been doing everything with software since this channel has kind of been more or less microcontrollers, but let me know what you guys think. Would you like to see more um, just straight-out, pure hardware implementations of things? Um, let me know in the comments. I may uh, do more videos that is just purely hardware and uh, there's no software involved. It just, you hook it up and it works. A lot of times, uh, 
it's simpler to do things in hardware uh, just due to the fact. And, and a lot of times it takes out a lot of bugs because remember your code can always have flaws in it. Code can always go off and get lost. Processors can hang, you know, things like that. So uh, there are benefits to doing things strictly in hardware. And so I, my recommendation to everyone is if you can do it in hardware, I would suggest doing it in hardware. Um, now, unless you're under a time constraint and you need to get something out quickly, um, sometimes it's really easy to just write a program and throw it in a micro and go on down the road. So I'm not arguing that. But I'm just broadening your minds. Just just keep your minds open that you don't always have to do everything in software. See, I mean, I could have taken this guy and um, think how complicated this would have been if we would have used a micro. I could have taken this guy and fed this line into an ADC, okay, in one of the ADC ports, then fed this guy to a GPIO somewhere, and then based on what you know what voltages I got here, you know I do an analog digital conversion, get a digital number, then based on what number or what thresholds I want, then I could do this. But think about that. I'd have to feed that you know feed this into an analog digital converter, feed this to a GPIO pin, make all those connections. Then I'd also have to write all the software, figure out what kind of threshold levels I want for this light sensor and you know do that accordingly. Whereas you know, I guess you could do that if let's say you wanted a precise amount of light and dark you then yeah an ADC would probably be better to go because you could get more precision out of it. But hey, if you're just wanting to get in the ballpark that hey, if it's if it's bright, I want it off or on. Either way, if I want it dark, I want it off or on. You know, I don't really care about the in between. This is a real great simple way to do it. You know, and as you saw in the demo video when I demoed this this circuit, you know, I mean it was light in the room and it was bright in the room and it, it wasn't actuating. But the minute I shine that bright light on it, then it actuated. And then when I removed the bright light, it it actuated back to its starting position. So that's what I mean. So think about your applications, guys. And if you can do it in hardware, I recommend do it in hardware if, if because it's more it's going to be more stable. It's going to be more straightforward. Um, and you don't have the tendency to it getting hung in a process somewhere. However, if time's an issue or precision, um, that's one thing that micros will gain you is precision because you can do a lot of things in a very short period of time, which means you not a lot can happen. You know, things can only change in certain amounts of time, and a lot of times a micro moves a lot faster than things will change. So. A micro is, is, is a good solution um, in a lot of situations, but not all situations. So this is just this is one of those simple situations. All right, guys, I've rambled on enough. Hopefully you like this and found it helpful and useful. If you want to see more strictly hardware, uh, post some comments in the bottom. And uh, while you're at it, push the like button. And if you're new to this channel, go ahead and hit subscribe. I'd, we'd love to have you join the, the team of everybody. I'm amazed at how many people the, this channel has grown to. And I thank every single one of you uh, for your support because I am truly enjoy making these videos and I truly enjoy um, the responses I get from you guys that that these have been helping you guys out I think that's just magnificent and and so I will continue to keep on doing it as, as long as I possibly can as long as you guys are getting good feedback from it I'll keep making them okay guys I'm out of time like subscribe share and all the rest and I'll see you guys next time that ought to do it